and see that there's a an increase in surface area and it's this increase in surface area that actually creates more bondable sites for different functionalizations to take place at the surface this is not visual from the material and it's not creating any type of negative effect relative to the surface morphology it is just an increase in surface area at the microscopic level that gives us those advantages so when we look at roll-to-roll -roll photovoltaic surface cleaning prior to any type of deposition there are advantages to using base materials which are lightweight and flexible they won't shatter or in other words be subject to any kind of damage in the field the use of for instance thin stainless steel substrates as a foil will have a thermal time constant of less than 10 microseconds so there's a lot of heat sinking that's capable with these type of materials and allows for a stable material in process stainless steel substrates can carry rolling oil deposits which need to be removed and in doing so with an atmospheric plasma process you can actually remove those depositions and create low low maintenance costs with regard to the material that is transporting those particular substrates when it comes to encapsulation materials polymers such as EVA and Tefsil are typically used usually these materials are also contaminated with organic polymer fragments water and absorbed gases and they should be removed and can easily be removed with an atmospheric plasma technology existing base material cleaning is an issue relative to the environment because wet cleaning solvent based processes can create not only acceptable materials for future processing but also uh, require a disposal process that uh, is not readily environmental and so when you transport a web through a detergent cleaning station you have the issue of not only the solvent that's being used but the disposal of the rinsing agents that are involved in the cleaning of those materials and so the advantage of using APT is to evalu evaluate the use of your current process and replace an aspect of that process which has to do with solvent and uh, different types of organic uh, disposal issues relying on a technology that will volatilize and vaporize the contaminants on the surface in a dry manner and that can also increase the adhesion relative to a surface and its interface is a primary candidate for replacement of existing wet processes here's an example of a stack relative to a PV module as you can see it's quite traditional in this stack relative to a crystalline silicone structure and a monolithic PV module to have these type of encapsulations but the use of atmospheric plasma has a great role in cleaning not only the metal alloy back contact layer of a crystalline silicon module but also for functionalizing the surface of glass as well as polymer encapsulation layers as well as other types of pattern circuitry we're also seeing the evolution of triple junction roll-to-roll -roll amorphous silicon structures and even these structures as they become more developed are candidates for different types of atmospheric plasma cleaning as replacements for wet cleaning and vacuum cleaning batch type processes there are prescriptions that also exist for these type of technologies in these base substrates such as stainless steel copper alloys copper nickel alloys and stainless steel foil structures minimum power densities have been established with the atmospheric plasma regime to clean these surfaces prior to lamination there are other types of materials such as thin films which also have minimum power densities required and specified uh, to create an effective active surface for lamination and bonding And there are still more substrates that need to be considered. Polyamide, PLA, 
and even Tyvex play a role in the construction of photovoltaics. And there are plasma densities and surface tensions that can be achieved relative to these materials that are quite useful for optimizing the process of incorporating these materials. Once treated, these materials have a very long life. As you can see by the top line, APT, or atmospheric plasma treated surfaces, have a very low degradation rate. That is opposed to corona treated or uh, arc based atmospheric uh, ionizations of air that are very reactive to the environment and will decline very quickly over time. There are also issues with air based ionizations that are relative to different types of low molecular weight organics that can collect on the surface given a rate or power uh, that is relative to those discharges. So we lead ourselves to a cleaning method that is much more effective than wet traditional processes. When you talk about metal cleaning processes, atmospheric plasma dry cleaning would seem to have an advantage. This is because the active cleaning agents in chemical wet cleaning involve acids, alkaline and alcohol solutions and detergent solutions as opposed to the use of ion and electron bombardment as well as the integration of a specific type of inert and oxygen gas combination which can uh, be effective in cleaning the surface in the same way in a reduced time frame. The dissolved chemical agents uh, that are involved in wet cleaning involving rolling oils and, medical and metal oxides as well as water soluble metal derivative derivatives are also part of the process where there are none dissolved chemical agents with regard to atmospheric plasma dry cleaning. There are no entrained process exhausts of course with wet cleaning but the entrained process exhausts that come with atmospheric plasmas are quite benign you have the volatilized hydrocarbon particles that may be present, you have aluminum oxide particles, and you have water-soluble aluminum derivatives uh, that are also uh, present in the exhaust, but again, are very inert. When we talk about emissions relative to chemical wet cleaning, we talk about water-laden chemical wastes. With plasma, and specifically atmospheric plasma, we're talking about 15 parts per million of ozone, a very small amount uh, relative to the process. You have 98% of the inert gas being part of the emission and because it's inert obviously it is uh, non-threatening to the environment. You have very low parts per million of a reactive oxygen percentage. Uh, you have small amounts of CO2 less than 10 parts per million. Uh, the same for water vapor and again the volatilized surface particulates. The recurring process costs are great relative to chemical water-based cleaning or wet cleaning. It could be fresh water, it involves additional chemicals, handling and disposal costs, all relative to the wet cleaning process. Now, the atmospheric dry cleaning process involves simply the process gases, those being inert and benign reactive gas chemistries. So in conclusion, we talk about the different processes that are involved and vacuum plasma surface modification is useful in applying anti-reflection coatings, surface passivation coatings, and is useful in etching and layering on surfaces. The evolution of the process is ultimately increased chemical waste disposal issues and a module cost that's requiring reduction because of its batch process. And there's also the issue of thin film growing at an accelerating rate through the year 2015. So to deal with that, atmospheric dry plasma modification processes are being introduced that will provide higher power densities and use gas chemistries which are non-threatening to the environment. These Technologies are suitable for not only flexible but for rigid module components such as frame and junction box sealing. It's an inline continuous process, there are no surface morphology effects, and there are no hazardous byproducts with regard to the discharge. 